destroy a doll you'd made for your little girl. What'd you say to her, Inez? We were just talking, Captain Lawford. One day she's so friendly, the next day she jumps down my throat. I don't remember what I said. All of a sudden she grabbed the doll and started ripping it to pieces. I didn't mean to start any trouble. Oh, well, it's not your fault. Nobody's blaming you. You just get back to work, Inez. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Terminal Island Division of the Los Angeles County Jail houses 250 inmates, all women of every age. We thought we'd bring you something a little different in the program you're about to see. Perhaps few of you have ever visited such a jail, where our women deputies work with great patience to bring about the gradual rehabilitation of these inmates, some of whom are behind bars for the first time. We're going to give you an authentic picture of the characters and types of some of these women. But our deputies are also sometimes endangered by strangely unpredictable women like blonde Bonnie Benson. Bonnie is awaiting trial on a charge of murder and has become a growing problem for the jail authorities. Beginning to get you too, huh? From the minute I was booked into this place, all I wanted was out. Well, at least you know you're gonna get out. Look at me. Every day I keep hoping something good will happen that I'll get in the clear. Did you see the papers this morning? How can I prove I wasn't someplace when they're digging up witnesses all the time willing to swear I was? I keep telling you, you'd be better off not to read those papers. It's just my luck to get mixed up with Mac Emmons and that Freddy. Are oh, there no angels, maybe, but nobody can tell me they'd beat an old man to death. And do I look like I'd murder anybody? Take it easy, Bonnie. You got a good lawyer, he believes you. Let him worry about getting in the clear. Even with a good lawyer, you need a little luck. Mine seems to be running out. I never thought I'd be in on a bum murder rap. Tough break, Bonnie. Wish I could do something to help. What could you do? I got friends. I was figuring maybe I could help you fix up an alibi. What's in it for you? Come off it, Bonnie. I'd just like to help you the way I'd like some of you to help me if I was in your tough spot. Can a gal even sympathize without she's got an ax to grind? Oh, you're a good kid, Kate. Sorry for everybody. Except maybe that guy of yours. You keep conking on the head when the book ends. <laughs> he asked for it. Must have been quite a free-for-all to call out the riot squad. That old biddy lives next door turns in the alarm if I just sneeze. Three times in one month, would you believe it? I wonder if that big lug misses me. I sure miss him. Holy Toledo, I'm doing the laundry room. Wait a minute, before you go, let me see her. Ready to pack up and go home anytime you say. I send you home in a minute. I didn't guarantee you wouldn't be back here before the week was out. My fault I'm getting clumsy. When I was young and frisky, they never caught me lifting things off them store counters. Almost 35 before they jugged me. <laughs> and that's a record in any. All right, Aggie, we know your story. Where's your booking envelope? Mm -hmm. Gee. Must have left it in the dorm. You know you're supposed to have it with you. Spend half my life in here and you still got to ask me my identification number. How did you talk some of the girls into not reporting this morning, Aggie? Me? Well, I was only... Aggie, I was just asking why we got a slave all day while that Bonnie Benson sits around having her fingernails manicured and taking beauty naps like a queen bee. Bonnie Benson is in here pending trial. She doesn't have any sentence to work off. If she doesn't want to do any more than is required of her, she doesn't have to. I guess you've got to be in on a murder rap to be pampered around here. Well, if her nibs don't wash dishes, I'm not going to wash dishes. And that's how a lot of the others feel. Well, they'll feel different when they find out that they forfeited their good behavior time and have to serve out their full sentence. 
Getting out sooner may not mean much to you, Aggie. You've got no youngsters on the outside that need looking after. Can't hear a word you're saying if you can't lift your voice hard, Judge. Seems to me like it's getting harder for you to hear us all the time, Aggie. Maybe you need one of those hearing gadgets. <laughs> Where did I get that kind of money? A body can hardly heist enough to get to eat. And what would stay in here all the time? You know Try that. this on for size, Aggie. It's one of those fancy ones. Why, it's more like an earring than a hearing aid. Gilding the pill, huh? I suppose you think a little bribe might win over old Aggie. I suppose you figured that I'd be so grateful of being able to hear all the chit-chat that I'd bring you a few tidbits. You've got a nerve. Oh, have you ever known us to encourage anybody to spy on you, Aggie? Now, have you? No, this was bought for you out of the Sheriff's Rehabilitation Fund. We just thought being able to hear might make things pleasanter for you. Now, that was the only reason. It's not returnable, so keep it among your souvenirs. We haven't got any use for it. Sorry, Ev. Trial didn't go so good, huh? No, you can't lie to those prosecuting attorneys. They got built-in radar. So what do I do? Talk my way right into a six-month stretch. Well, maybe next time you remember to sign your own name when you write checks. And spend my own money? Are you kidding? Sarge gave me a couple hours off. To adjust, she says. Mind if I bum a cigarette? Help yourself. Funny who you run into down at City Hall. Girl I used to know just did time at the county jail downtown. So? She says a woman deputy is planted in one of the dorms out here. Doesn't know how it got around, but she says it's for sure. How do you like that? One of our own club sisters in here, a policewoman. Maybe someday you'll... Did your friend tell you anything else? Only thing I could find out was the identification number when she was booked in. That's the way they work it. Book her in just like any one of us. But how are you going to spot her? This should be of some help. 25586. Did you tell anybody else about this? Let's keep it that way, huh? I see you've been wired for sound. How's it for eavesdropping? What did you say? That thing any good? All I got so far is static. Can't figure the dang thing. You might know they'd give me a piece of junk. Oh, come here, Aggie. Let me help you with that thing. I used to have a landlady that had one of these guys. Hey, what are you trying to do? Bust my eardrums? I'll fix it myself. Six. That'll be some job. Could be any one of 50. I'll find her. I was just looking for a cigarette. I'm fresh out. Just keep out of my pockets. You want something, ask for it. From the moment Bonnie Benson suspected a deputy had been planted in her dormitory, her attitude changed completely. She took on the aspect of a model inmate, became very cooperative, friendly, took part in all social and recreational activities in an effort to establish closer contact with the others, with one purpose in mind, to gain access to booking envelopes bearing the identification numbers 
which each inmate is required to carry on her person. Bonnie feigned minor ailments, toothaches, headaches, anything to stand in the nurse's line, hearing the numbers being called as the girls waited their turn for medication. She carried on this intensive search even to the extent of joining the various classes, ceramics, leather work, sewing. How old are you kids on this? Mary's five, Jimmy nine, and the baby's two. My boy's gonna be nine Thursday. They're bringing him to visit me. I'm trying to finish this in time for his birthday. Look, Bonnie, almost finished. Think it'll fit? Oh, he'll grow into it. He's sprouting up like a beanstalk. So are my three. Mary looked pretty in this. I can't wait to see her in it. How soon will I be? Not too long now. Seems like years I've been here. My mother sent me a picture. The lovely children, Inez. You got a nice family, Inez. You stay out where you can keep an eye on them after this, do you hear? Kids need good mothering unless you want them to grow up knowing the inside of a jail. Once I get out, I'm never going to be away from them again. Hey, we got company. Get a load of the new recruits. There's a lot of traffic this time of day. It's all right to smoke. Go ahead. Oh, God. Dear one, don't. Bobby, are you all right? Is Annie Mae taking good care of you? Yeah, she's great. She gets up every day to fix Uncle Fred and me breakfast. And Aunt May never stays in bed late like you, Mom. And she makes cookies with frosting and everything. Well, we get up early, too. Sometimes it's still dark. And when I get home... When I get home, I'll get up and fix your breakfast just like Annie May. Gee, that's great, Mom. When? Soon. Uncle Fred said you were going to work here for a long time, maybe. Not so long, baby. Don't call me baby. I'm almost nine. Well, that's practically a grown man, isn't it? Just think you'll be going into the fourth grade soon. Yes. Mom, why do I have to use Uncle Fred's name and go to a new school? I like my old school. Oh, you'll like it fine as soon as you make some new friends. Listen, I got some presents for you. I made them myself. Why do you save them? Working in a prison, Mom? I thought they only put bad men in prison. There's all ladies here. Why, Mom? I asked Aunt May, but she wouldn't tell me. Don't you want to see your presents? Uh, this isn't the big one, Bobby. It's Sandy, the seahorse. Like I used to tell you about in the story. Oh, yeah, now I remember. 
Sandy the seahorse swam the seven seas. Sure. It's been so long, I almost forgot. Gee, he swam just about anywhere he wanted to. Any place in the whole world. He wouldn't like it much in a prison, though. I sure don't. <laughs> How about this, Bobby? Bobby, Mother has to go back to work now. I want you to be a real good boy and don't make your enemy any trouble, you hear? Bobby, promise me something. If anybody says anything bad about me, if they say I did anything bad, don't you believe them, do you hear? Don't you believe? Miss Jarvis. Probably frizzed up like a circus pony. Oh, Pete's sake, Aggie, sit still. I can give a permit the time it takes to fix your hair. I don't see it make any difference if that ear button shows or not. It's too bad we can't all be elegant like your friend Lady Macbeth. No, quit it. You're no Lily to be criticizing anybody. Maybe not, but I'd hate to make the front pages the way she did. Her and them pals of hers hammering that poor old gent to death. Maybe you were there and saw it, huh? Nobody's proved her guilty yet. Whether she did or didn't, I feel sorry for anyone who lets herself in for that kind of grief. <laughs> How about changing the subject, huh, girls? All I was trying to do, I was trying to steer you chicks away from more trouble than you're in already. She's a bad one. I've been trying to tell you that, but you won't listen to me, either of you. Criminy, do I have to leave my own bunk to get some quiet around here? If that's me I'm looking at, you've turned out a miracle. How did you do it, Kate girl? Think nothing of it, Aggie. A labor of love. Oh. Why, I... Bonnie? Something wrong? Is it Bobby? He's all right, isn't he? I think I'll go and show the captain she'll fade dead away from shock. Maybe you'd feel better if you talk about it. Talk about what? Why is everyone always trying to pump me? Nobody's pumping you. I just thought you might feel better if you told me about Bobby. If you want to sit here and mope, it's okay. I'm sorry, Kate. It wasn't easy. Never easy saying goodbye to your own kid. Thanks. Well, that one's sure been leeching onto you lately. Have you seen her identification papers? Oh, cut it out, Ev. Kate's on the level. <laughs> Offering to stick her neck out for me, nobody else has. You got a lot to learn, kid. You ain't had much truck with the law up till now, have you? If you mean that's the way they operate, you're top on my list, Ev. Dishing out all those little favors for me. How about spieling off your own ID number? Look, I'm the one stuck my neck out to help you. You've got a gall. Listen, if you want to see my ID papers, you're going to have to find a smarter way of doing it. Like it, Captain? 
like it. Oh, Aggie, you look beautiful, doesn't she, Sergeant? Oh, much too elegant to be anything less than a full-fledged trustee. At it again, huh? Always conspiring to convert me into a trustee. Well, you can work your way out of here sooner as a trustee. Well, it'd be nice at that, hearing the sounds of this old world on the outside. <laughs> well, then how about climbing into a uniform with that first white stripe on it? No rushing me now, Sergeant. All right, take your own sweet time, Aggie. You got six long months to go. Say, Captain, mm -hmm. that policewoman you stashed in our dorm. Are you getting foggy in the head? What are you talking about? I may be foggy about it, a lot of things, but not what goes on in this place. I've been in and out of here too often. All right, all right, Aggie, out with it. What have you got to say? You better get her out of here. Save you and her a lot of trouble. Now, don't get the idea I'm turning squealer. I just don't like to see people get hurt. If I could have found out who she was, I would have warned her myself. Well, thanks for the tip, Aggie. But you know better than to put any stock in dormitory gossip. <laughs> You're trying to find out if it's dormitory gossip, well, it ain't. As far as I know, the only ones onto it is me and that Queen Bee and Evelyn. I'm onto that, Bonnie. Snitching looks at identification envelopes. I'd hate to be in her way when she finds what she's looking for. You ask me. She murdered that old codger. How about letting the jury decide that, Aggie? And let us worry about hidden police women in the dorms, okay? We better get our girl out of there. I wonder how he got tipped off. Search me. I know that not one of us even suspected. Must be a good operator. Oh, we better move before Bonnie tabs her and gets her claws out. Three months cooped in this place with nothing but women. When I get out, I'm blowing my wide on some fancy times and dance the soles off a dozen pair of shoes. Is that what you're really looking forward to, Jen? Well, what do you think? Sitting up with squalling brats all night? Cooking three a day for some long kid? Who are you kidding, Jen? You'd hock your eye teeth for some long kid willing to walk you down the aisle. Things was pleasant around here till you got that ear button. Hey, Kate, remember that snooty babe got booked in the same time we were? All I remember is she got bailed out before morning. I'm still here. Don't let it eat you. She's that Miss Fancy Duds got booked in again yesterday. But you should have seen her that night, up to here in Mink. Should have heard the howl she put up. Nobody was putting a number on her, but they did. From the social register to the police blotter. And Kate Farley and me booked into this fancy resort right behind her. Jan, I didn't know you and Kate were booked in together. Sure, Kate was right smack in front of me. Oh, anybody can see I'm no great shakes at ironing. Hey, Agnes, how about give me a hand with these sleeves, huh? Jen? Mm -hmm. You believe in numerology? Tell me your number and I'll tell you your fortune. 25587. And I hope it adds up to money and love. In that order. For the both of us. You're due for a facial. <laughs> what came over her? Got some crazy notion I was a policeman. Went completely berserk. Well, I never thought she'd get out of hand like that. You okay? Yeah. All right, girls, back to work. Good work, Kate, girl. Fancy taking Kate for the law. <laughs> you look about as much like a lady sheriff as I do. Bonnie Benson was not only unpredictable and dangerous, but a woman with an alert mind. It didn't take her long to solve the identity of the woman deputy we found necessary to plant inside the jail. Perhaps you also guessed right. It was Kate, whom we assigned to Bonnie's dormitory. Bonnie Benson was found guilty of murder in the first degree, paying the maximum penalty for her crime. Her fine young son, Bobby, was given over to the custody of his aunt and uncle, with whom he now lives in the Midwest, entirely free from the tragic past of his mother. Oh, one other thing. You'll be glad to know that nowadays the only reason Aggie Martin returns to the county jail is to pay an occasional visit to the deputies, who she feels made possible her wonderful new life. And now a word from Eugene W. Biscalouse, Sheriff of Los Angeles County. 
Friends, the members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department are pleased to cooperate in the production of Code 3 in the interests of crime prevention and rehabilitation. We hope you'll join us again next week for another true case from our files. I thank you very much. Thank you.